Welcome to Haxby Shed. A friend of mine, who's not a machinist, asked me to go into more detail about working with metal. For some, the content would be too basic, but for others, it may be of interest. So please let me know with likes or comments. Welcome to Haxby Shed. I'm going to make a long T-slot nut for this T-slotted face plate. I got this face plate from the States on eBay. I got it for quite a reasonable price, but it wasn't so reasonable by the time I'd paid for the shipping and the taxes. I didn't have any other face plates at the time and I didn't know how often they were going to come up for sale. So I thought best grab this while I could. I really like it. It has the advantage that with a long T-slot nut I can clamp items in the centre. So the spindle nose only comes to about there and so it gives free passage for the T-slot nut to pass backwards and forwards. So the first thing that I need to do is to mark out the work. And I'm going to be using this little height gauge which I made. So here's my marking blue which I keep in a bag to try to avoid spilling it all over the place. Put a little bit at both ends and we'll let that dry. It only takes a few minutes to dry and then we can mark it off. These are the sizes that I'm shooting for. So I've started by setting my height gauge to 16. OK, with the height gauge set, I can just score that across the top. And we'll do the same on the other side, other end I should say. And that should give me a clear marking for my body, which is going to be 16 deep. So with the work in the shaper, it's a six inch length. I need to set the stroke of the shaper, which I do by opening this door here and with using a three quarter or a 19 millimeter socket, put that onto the adjusting nut. I need to move the slider the mechanism to the right position and I can read off the stroke and at the moment the stroke although it's a metric shaper it tells me the stroke in inches so I guess that tells you something about the age of this machine I can loosen off the stroke lever nut move that to a bit over six inches maybe seven inches retighten that and that should give me the stroke that I need. So on the other side I've moved the clutch lever to the operating position. Pull down this cover and as I turn this I can see the stroke coming back and then forward. So let's see if we've got the stroke length about right, which we have. But the stroke's in the wrong position. I need to slide the ram forward so that the stroke is in the right position. So we adjust the ram position relative to the work with this nut on the top, loosen this off, push it forward. We need about 15 or 20 millimeters for this uh, clapper box to drop back after it's finished, after it's returned from the cut. And we can check it now to see if we've got it in the right position. So it should clear the work, which it does 
and comes back to the beginning and clears at this side, which it does. So that's now set right for that cutting stroke and, and position. Now another thing I need to think about is the cutting speed. And the cutting speed varies according to the length of stroke. And on this table, on the, on the side of the machine here, we can see red in inches and green in metric. So six inches or 150 millimeters would be shown here. And I'm looking for about 20 meters per second cutting speed. So we'd go for 23.5, which is near enough, and read across, and we need about 85 strokes per minute. And I know from reading this table, there are four speeds on this shaper. Two of them are set by, or at least um, one way of changing speed is the belt setting from the motor. There's a two-step pulley. And the other way, used in combination, is this. And if it's pushed in, uh, we get the low range. And if it's pulled out, we get the high range. Now, actually on this machine, I've fitted an inverter variable frequency drive. And I've set that up such that if I turn my speed range one way, it's as if I'm in, on one of the pulleys. And I turn it the other way, it's as if I'm on the other pulleys. So by using the variable speed knob on the inverter drive, actually, I don't need to change the belt on the pulleys. <clears throat> but I do need to set these gears, the two speed gear settings there. And down the side here, we've actually got my uh, on off buttons for the inverter drive. But also, hopefully you can see, there's a knob. And when it's turned all the way one way, it's as if the belt is on one of the pulleys. I turn it the other way and it's as if it's on the other pulley. So it just means that I don't have to fiddle about with belts. I can get the speed range as set on the table. This table. This time I mean this table. <laughs> Not this table. I can get that speed range uh, without adjusting belts. Okay. So let's check it. Yes, well, that was 122. <laughs> I should have turned the knob the other way. Now this should be more like 85 strokes per minute, which should give me 23-ish meters per second cutting speed. That's better. The machine's not trying to destroy itself now. Perfect. Okay. Now we need to set up the table cross feed and this rotating lever works with a ratchet and according to how much of an offset I've got set here changes how many clicks the ratchet moves around and then moves the table across at the moment the ratchet is set in the neutral position but I also need to touch off the work so that I know where the surface of our, my workpiece is. Okay, so let's touch off. <clears throat> okay, so that's just touched off. Shapers do have a habit of throwing out a lot of metal. And now that will work its way across. I need to take off about four millimeters in total. And that's half a millimeter, so we've got eight cuts to do. So we'll come back when I've got that done. As we got near to my line, I reduced the feed. 
So it's now moving forward only one click at a time, rather than two clicks at a time. So we've probably, well we have got one more cut to make now, after this and I'll be down to my line. Okay, so I've finished reducing this dimension. It was a bit rough because I've got quite a sharp point too, but I just rub it over with a file and there we go. It's nice and smooth and it's given me 16 millimeters in this dimension. So now I need to do the same thing, mark it off and then reduce it from 25 to 23 millimeters in this dimension. Very nice. Okay, so that's give. Now I've got the overall dimensions that I want. I need to mark off where I'm going to cut the corners out to make the T shape. Well, having marked it out, I looked at it, didn't look right. Of course, I got it wrong. So I'm alright with my dimensions overall, and I'm alright with 9mm here. But this top of the T, the leg of the T, should be 13 and the two sides should be 5. So I've remarked it. So now remarked, you can see the leg of the T, the sticking up towards me, uh, is much broader. Okay, so let's get an idea where this is going to touch off first. So unlock, wind down, and that I think is going to be about the touch off point. Okay, start the motor. Hang on. Safety switch on there needs a bang. That's it. Off we go. And it's just touching at this end. It isn't perfectly level. I'll probably give it another smack with the rubber mallet. Okay. So now we're going to cut and watch by eye for this line. Um, there isn't a stop. We just need to get it right. We're just cleaning up this edge and I'll just manually feed it. So I feed it on the back stroke. Now working away on the other side. And just as before I've slowed the machine down so I can handle it better. Okay, so it's made. Let's see how we get on. Ta da! Now I've made the basic long T nut, I can turn to drilling and threading in the center. So I'll put a bit of blue on there and let that dry. As usual, it's moved a bit. Get in the middle of there. Right, happy with that. Now over to the drill. So I've looked up on my drill speed chart and I want to cut steel. The tapping drill for a 10 millimeter metric course is 8.5 mil. You can see that the speeds for the drill are stepped because it operates on pulleys. And I'm going to go for 720, which may not be on this chart, but that's one of the speeds on my drill. So I'll go over to the drill and check the pulleys. So this is the speed chart on my drill. 720 is D3. And you can see the pulleys above. So that's what I'll check now. Well that's currently set to A2 which is about 430 so I need to loosen off the belts and change it. So now I'm set to D3, 720 RPM. So I'm lining up for my pilot drill. I need to check the alignment and then clamp up the vise. Okay, so off we go. Close the lid. Drill the pilot. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now to change drills. 
and drill this out to the tapping size, 8.5mm. Okay, so now that's ready to tap and I'll set start tapping in the drill press to get the uh, get it up straight and aligned. Okay, so I've got the tap into the chuck. I have taken the belts off so I can spin the tap so I can spin the tap freely. And we'll just start the tap in here. Now because the tap is hard uh, and the chuck jaws are hard, it won't grip very well, so we'll only just get started. I've also loosened off the vise so that it'll take its own position. That's all right. So we'll at least get it started. I should put a bit of oil on it, I guess. But we won't get far before the tap starts to slip in the chuck. And then we'll, once we've got started, and I know it's square, we'll just move it over to the vise and do it there. You can see the tap starting to slip already. But it just gets it started at 90 degrees. Okay, so I'll wind this out. Whoops, there you go. And we'll transfer the tap and work over to the vise. Okay, so I'm set up in the vise. Got the tap started, not cross-threaded. Put a bit of oil on it and off we go. It always seems as if it's going to bind and it's much harder than one imagines and I think sometimes you know the tapping drill size is too tight but with experience I've learnt sometimes if the tap jams it's better to wind it further forward a little bit more and it chops off the curls of swarf that are developing and we Get the hang of it there. You see it jammed, so I'll go forward a little bit more. These are all very basic skills one learns as an apprentice. Item made. Video over. Go order a new tap. Thank you for watching. Hacks be shared.